I want to play you some audio of uh, Mel Gibson. As you know, these have not been good days for Mel. Mel is uh, in basically having a bit of a meltdown. Mel is in meltdown mode right now. I used to like Mel Gibson. To me, he is the Gibson of Braveheart, of the Patriot, and of course of the Passion of the Christ. He is to me one of the finest actors in Hollywood. He has been blackballed by the liberal community in Hollywood, by all of those Marxists and socialists who despise his uh, advocacy of God, country, and family. And really, the liberal left in Hollywood had it out for Gibson way before the Passion of the Christ. His big sin was when he came out with the movie Braveheart, which many people don't know literally rekindled the Scottish nationalist movement in Scotland, where that movie talked about William Wallace, and how the Scottish patriots stood up against the brutal English king, Edward the Longshanks. And in that movie, what did Mel Gibson preach? What was the movies embodied in that film, the, the values embodied in that movie? It was the importance of clan, of family, of love, and of country of resisting imperial occupation and saying, as a people, as a distinct nation and culture, not only the Scots, but obviously all peoples in the world have a right to exist in freedom and in dignity. By defending nationalism, by defending patriotism, the left never forgave him. That was his big sin. And then he compounded it with the movie The Patriot. Where in that movie, he showed the struggle of the American Revolution through the eyes of a father whose son decides to fight the Redcoats, the British, and stand up for American independence and American freedom. And what the liberal left despised him for, what all the critics disparaged him for was, how come you didn't show slavery? How come you didn't show how oppressive the American colonists were? How come you didn't show the genocide of the Indians? In other words, how dare you celebrate the victory of the United States in its war for independence against the British? The fact that he celebrated American nationhood, American patriotism, American liberty, that was his big crime. And the one that put the nail in his coffin in the eyes of liberal Hollywood was, of course, the Passion of the Christ, where he relived the last 12 hours of Christ's days, where Christ was crucified for us. The seminal story, the seminal myth, the seminal reality of Western civilization, that there was a man, the Son of God, who embodied suffering goodness in a wicked, evil world. And that, for many people in Hollywood, will know that's anti-Semitism. Because how can you, according to their view, Mel Gibson was anti-Semitic. Because all of the Jewish priestess, priests and priestesses, all of the Jewish high priests who, or, who, who, who ordered Christ be crucified, well, they were depicted apparently in a negative light. This was a form of anti-Semitism, whether Mel Gibson knew it or not. In other words, the New Testament is an anti-Semitic document. That's what the charges against Gibson amounted to. This is the warped world of the multicultural, politically correct elite in Hollywood. They hate the family, they hate the nation, and they hate Christianity. And they were out to destroy Mel Gibson ever since he made The Passion of the Christ. And now, what did Gibson do? Literally, it's like a Shakespearean tragedy. A lovely, a lovely and loving wife of 28 years. She bore him seven children. Robin Gibson. She helped him with his battle with alcoholism. She forgave his past sexual transgressions, all of his past infidelities. She forgave him and stood by him every step of the way. And then, my friends, it's almost like out of the Bible itself. A man redeemed 
A man forgiven. A man given everything. Hundreds of millions of dollars of wealth. Fame. A wonderful loving wife. Seven beautiful children. And he throws it all away for a Russian model slash singer. Oksana Gregoreva is her name. Oksana Gregoreva. Literally, with everything about her is phony. Her phony breasts, her phony lips, her phony face, her phony love for him. And he had a love child with her, and he left his wife. He divorced his wife of 28 years. He threw it all away. For literally, let me be frank, a Russian whore. My ancestors and my parents come from Eastern Europe. Believe me, my friends. When I tell you this, I know what I'm talking about. There are certain types of women from Eastern Europe who know how to play a man, who all they want to do is literally steal a man from his wife and his family for his money. And that's what she did. And so with her little plastic boobs and her plastic rear end and her plastic face and her plastic heart, she literally ensnared him. He went for the phony Russian slut abandoning his wife. He let his passions get the better of him. He let his sexual lust get the better of him. And so he abandoned his wife and he shacked up with her. And of course, what did the Russian gold digger want? She wanted his money. She wanted to get her hooks into him as deep as she could. So of course, you have a love child. Now you have the child, now you have the gravy train. That child is your meal ticket. Now Mel Gibson is going to be indebted to her for millions of dollars. He's got to pay child support. She's got him right where she wants him. And so, my friends, what then happened? Well, once the child was born, suddenly she showed her teeth. She showed who she really was. Nothing more than a gold digger. And so as Mel Gibson begins to find out, he was used, he was played for. The Russian took him for all he was worth. She lied to him every step of the way. Nothing was ever real between them. Of course there was no love. She's much younger than he is. Mel, what did you think she was after you for? Because you're a good guy? Because you got a good heart? You think she's much younger than you? What? It's your body? Hey, Mel, with your sagging muscles and everything, you think she's after your body? No. No. She was after you for your money. And now she took you to the bank. And so now Gibson, obviously again, fallen off the wagon, drinking heavily, his career in tatters, his wife gone, his girlfriend a complete fraud. Now Gibson begins to blow up at her on the phone. And of course, what did the Russian slut do? She has it on tape. She has everything on tape. And they met with the lawyers. And she wanted to blackmail him with the tapes. And I got you on tape using all kinds of expletives. I got you on tape using all kinds of racist slurs, even using the N-word. The F-bomb is being dropped at every turn. I want even more money. And Gibson told her to go fly a kite. And so now she has been releasing the tapes. Here are the tapes, my friends. They are shocking. They are stunning. Believe me, Mel does not look good. Ed, roll clip one, baby.